Hey, it's Michael Wade, costume director for the Dallas Theater Center, and this is our final video in our four-part series on mask making. The supplies I'll be using today include my sewing machine, which is already threaded. I've also got my cut pieces for the mask, pins, a pair of sharp scissors, a seam ripper, some extra needles just in case, elastic or twill tape, you can use either one of these. I've also got my nose pieces handy. I'll need one of these per mask. Our first step will be to sew the two coordinating pieces together at the center front, which is the curved side. You'll sew these two together and these two together. You take the two pieces, lay them on top of each other, right side to right side. Now when I say right side to right side, what that means, sometimes fabrics are different on one side than the other. My bandana material, there's a slight difference that you probably can't see in the video, but it's not that great a difference. If your fabric is very different on one side than the other, all you need to do is choose which side you want to be the outside, the side that we'll all see. That side is the right side. The other side we often call the wrong side. The right side is often referred to as the fashion side. So when we sew this curved seam together, put the two right sides together. Let them face each other like that. And my ivory fabric is also pretty much the same on either side, so it won't affect me that much. And you'll stitch from here to here. I've now sewn both curves on each set of fabrics. I won't bore you by forcing you to watch me physically sew every single piece, so what I'll do is sew them and then show you each finished seam before I move on. Something else you should consider doing with a curved seam after it's sewn is what we call clipping the curve. What that can mean is you cut little triangles out of the seam allowance following along your curved seam, but never clipping through the stitch. The stitch has to be intact. What this does is when you flip it around and the seam will be on the inside of your mask, you'll be able to press the seam a lot flatter, it'll be crisper and prettier. An alternative to this, instead of clipping the seam like this, if you don't, if you don't want to do that, you can simply trim some of the seam allowance away. I've trimmed about half of it away already. Once you've finished clipping your curve or trimming away the seam allowance and then pressing your seam, we're ready to insert the elastic or the twill tape, whichever one you prefer as your closure. If you'd like to use elastic, you'll need two separate lengths, one for the top and one for the bottom. Each of those needs to be 10 to 12 inches and really depends on the size of your head. If you'd like to use the twill tape to tie it around the back of your head, You'll need four different pieces of that, each of those ranging about 10 to 13 inches. My two different elastic pieces are now pinned in place to the right side of my fashion fabric. The edge of the elastic lines up with the edge of the side of the mask. On the top and the bottom of the mask, Notice that the elastic is about a half an inch away from each of those edges, and that's because eventually there will be a stitch right here, but our stitches are all a half an inch from the edge, because remember, our seam allowance is a half an inch. So ultimately, this side will be folded in a half an inch. So where we've got this elastic lined up, that will mean that once everything is sewn and turned out, that this elastic will be in the very corner of our mask. There are a couple of ways you can go about applying this elastic to the mask. You can either go through and stitch each piece individually, all four ends, 
or something else. The second way is faster. It's not difficult to do, but some people don't like sewing multiple layers at the same time. And that's okay, you do what's comfortable for you. If you'd like to go into the second way, you take your lining with the right side of the lining fabric facing the right side of the fashion fabric, lay the two sections together. What this is gonna do is put the elastic between the two layers. And all you need to do here I would start at the bottom of the mask, sew up the side a half an inch. This is your regular straight stitch, and in that regular straight stitch, you'll catch the elastic all in one swoop. When you get up here, a half an inch away from this edge, you can just pivot right in the machine. If you leave your needle in the fabric right on the corner, simply turn the fabric and change directions. Across the top, once you've changed directions, you'll just follow this curve up to the center stitch. Now the center stitch does create a bit of a corner. It's not 90 degrees, but it is enough where you can pivot again and then come down the other curve of the top, pivot at this corner, and then you'll end up on the other side of the mask where the other ends of the elastic will be tucked in to the same kind of seam. You can end down here. Remember also to backstitch at the beginning of your stitch and at the end of your stitch. That'll keep these stitches from coming loose later on. That stitch is now complete. Up the side, I pivoted at the corner, followed the curve across the top, came back down, pivoted, and down the side, and I've backstitched. Now my lining side and my fashion side are attached. The bottom is still open, and if you open it up, you can see your elastic pieces inside there. You've made a little bitty pocket. Our next step we need to trim these corners. Simply cut across the corner at a diagonal, like that, without cutting your stitch at all. If you cut the stitch, it'll start to come apart. You'll do this on the opposite corner. You'll also do this on the bottom. We cut the corners off because eventually we're going to turn this right side out. And when you're trying to get these corners turned out all nice and pretty, the bulk, the extra fabric in that corner from the seam allowance is no longer there and won't make your mask look bulky and bumpy in the corner. Also having sewn that stitch, our elastic is now caught between the green fabric and the white fabric. All nice and pretty. Because the top of the mask is also a curve, like we did with the center front seam, you might also want to clip that curve or trim off some of the seam allowance like I've started here. One final step before we turn all of this out, we should close half of the bottom seam. And I'll show you why only half in just a moment. Now this stitch could be combined with your original stitch where you went up the side, across the top, and down the other side. You could simply start at the center seam on the bottom of the mask sewing out to one corner and then begin the other stitch. Just make sure that when you're doing this, 
you're not getting the elastic that's inside the two layers caught in any of these seams where it shouldn't be caught. That will render the elastic unusable in that stitch. Of course, you can pick the stitch out and redo it, no problem. Let me sew that real quick. Okay, I have that stitch sewn now. Mine turned out a little crooked and that's okay. I just wanted to show you also that I did end up going past the center seam just a little bit and I only did that because eventually when we turn this out there's a bit of an angle right here and this will make it easier to turn out if you if you go ahead and encompass that stitch that seam here within this stitch but I've left this gap open now we're ready to turn this out Across the bottom, you'll notice I did take a clipping out of that. I just cut a little triangle out right on the seam to alleviate some of the tension that was there because that seam is curved. It's not required. It just relaxes the whole piece. Now, the gap that we've left open, turn this entire piece right side out. the whole thing. You can use your pieces of elastic to help grab onto it. Get your corners nice and tucked out. Make sure you do that on all four corners. Across the bottom. What we're going to do is press this edge here so that it's nice and flat and that the white side and the green side are even with each other. But you can already tell it's starting to look like a mask. Look at that, you're making a mask. Also, if you had elected to use the twill tape instead, Inserting it into the mask is the same process. You'll just have four separate pieces instead of two like this. I have all of my edges pressed now. The whole way around the mask, pressed nice and flat. I've even pressed the seam allowances that are here where we've not finished stitching yet. The gap, I simply turned those half inch seam allowances inward and pressed them. Eventually, we will close this shut, but we're not there yet. We have one more step to do before that. We have our nose piece to still insert. Of course, the nose piece wants to live at the top, like so. The placement is similar to this, However, we would like this to be between these two layers. So, insert the bar into the gap that you've left. And now you'll have to do the rest of this by feeling it because of course you can't see the bar anymore. You want to work this bar up to that same position where you had it when it was on the outside of the mask. This is going to feel awkward. You'll feel like fumble fingers. You'll feel like you can't get it to sit still. And it's a challenge. What does help in placing this is to go ahead and bend the bar a little bit. Then it's not fighting so much with the curve of the fabric. Trying to insert a straight bar into curved fabric is going to drive you crazy. So you can bend it a little bit. You'll notice that relieves some of that awkward tension. You'll notice though, that because it's a straight bar, it's not gonna go all the way up to the, your seam. It will line up about a half an inch down from that center seam in the mask. But you can do this by feel. Uh, let me get that a little more aligned and the eyeball that it's center 
So now you can see these where I'm folding the mask back. That's where my bar is sitting currently. So that's a fine place, I think. So to keep it there while I'm, see it's already moving, to keep it there while I'm sewing, I'm going to use a, a pin or two while holding it in one hand, by feel, I'm gonna insert the pin on the bottom of the bar, go through both layers of fabric, and then come back through both layers at the top of the bar. Now, the pin has pinned our nose piece in place, and it's not going anywhere. I can do the same thing on each edge of the bar just to help secure it. If you're not really feeling like fumble fingers, like I am, and this feels good to you, you don't have to use pins. I'm just showing you one way to perhaps make this a little easier on you. Get that inserted. Grab another pin. Insert on the bottom, right on the bottom of the bar, and then come back as soon as you can. Now those three pins are holding my bar in place and it's not going to go anywhere. Now all you need to do is sew one straight line all the way across the bottom of the bar without touching the bar, without hitting the bar with your needle. Get as close to the bar as you can. And once you've gotten to the end of the bar, keep going and just run off the edge of the mask that's creating this triangular area for the bar to live in. If you'd really like to control where the bar sits, you can do another stitch across the top of the bar, the same idea like that. So after fumbling around for a little bit, I've gotten my nose piece in place and I ran my stitch across the bottom of the nose piece without hitting it all the way to the ends of the mask. Now my nose piece is trapped in that section of the mask. I can bend it to fit my nose. This will give me a better fitting mask. All right. I also went ahead, now that my nose piece is in, I went ahead and shut the bottom of the mask. You remember we had that gap that was still open. Just run a stitch along the edge of your mask, and you're done. Now, if you want your uh, something a little more aesthetically pleasing and you don't like that stitch only being on the bottom, you could always run a stitch all the way around the edge of your mask. That's okay. It'll add to the strength of your mask. It'll be a little more uniform with the edge stitch here. It'd be a nice look. That is our mask, everyone. The only thing I haven't covered are the other two shapes of mask. Now mask B, remember, is basically the same shape as this. It has a few more corners, so you'll have a few more pivots, but you put it together in the exact same way as this one. Mask C is the one that was the least like these two. You still basically put it together in the same way, except you don't have a center front seam. That was cut on the fold, remember? But you still insert your elastic or twill tape in the same way in the corners. You stitch all the way around, but you leave a gap open in the bottom to insert the nose piece at the top. The only thing that those two masks have that this one does not is the pleat. But I can show you quickly on this mask what that should look like. On the other masks, you should have marked where your pleats are. All you do, and you can wait to fold the pleats until you're at this stage. You can come back and you'll go, let's pretend that real quick, I have one pleat here. These pins are gonna mark my pleats. We've got these two. You take one, the bottom one, you fold that fabric on the mark, and then you fold it up to the next mark. 
like that. So now those marks should be on top of each other like that. You can, I hope you can see that like so. And then when you've got, you can pin this in place. When you've got all your pleats ready to go, mask C had three pleats on each side. Mask B only has one pleat on each side. You can simply come through and top stitch that down. You know, you can secure that with your edge stitch. This stitch that you might want to carry around the rest of the mask, you could use that stitch to hold these pleats in place. And that's it. That's the only difference. And you're done. And now I have a nice mask and I can go grocery shopping and do all kinds of things, you know, except that it doesn't matter. So there.